What is looping? Looping is a generic term used to state that you're wasting the killer's time. The more of the killer's time you can waste, the more your team can do gens and increase your odds of escaping. In today's video, we're going to cover 5 tips to get you more confident when it comes time to engage with the killer. This video will assume you are newer to DBD, having played some survivor, you know the basics of running and vaulting, but not yet at all confident when it comes time to run the killer. The first tip is actually not even in the match, it's know your build. The perks you bring into a match play a massive role in how you will survive in chase. The most powerful perks a survivor can bring are exhaustion perks, which give you some sort of speed boost and or stun the killer in some way. Three examples of easy to use exhaustion perks are balanced landing, live, and overcome. Besides exhaustion perks, there are many other chase perks that are basically just there to help you in chase, such as windows of opportunity, quick and quiet, dance with me, iron will, and many others. All right, now that we're running an exhaustion perk and maybe another chase perk or two, it's time for tip number two, which is have a plan. Once the game has started, the first thing you probably do is you find a gen and you start working on it. While you're working on that gen, you need to make sure you're looking around you at your surroundings to see what pallets are nearby, what vaults are nearby, so that you can equip yourself for when the killer comes. You can take this a step further by trying to work on a gen that favors your exhaustion perk. Let's say you have balanced landing on, Maybe you'd prefer to work on the gen that's right next to a hill or like at the top of a main building. Or if you have lithe equipped, make sure you know where the nearest vault is, whether it's a pallet or a window. You don't want to be caught without a plan when the killer shows up because then you're likely to take a hit right away. Okay, now tips three and four are both very similar and they're both having to do with the chase. But tip number three, I, I had to make its own tip because it's so important. And that tip is look behind you. I know as a beginner, it's already kind of information overload to be in a chase and wondering where you should go next and what your next move should be. But if you can get a grasp of looking behind you while the killer is chasing you, it will teach you so much. Let's say you vault a window. You'll know which direction the killer went because you were looking behind you. The killer made a left, oh, well, I'm going to make a right. This is also extremely important for pallets. You don't want to be running forward without looking behind you, assuming you're still in chase and throw a pallet when the killer actually dropped you a while ago. Since this guide is for beginners, I'm not going to talk about pallet efficiency and how there's only so many pallets, but it's probably obvious that there's only so many pallets on the map and you want to save as many as you can. Now that we know how important it is to look behind us, let's go into tip number four, which is a, a collective do's and don'ts in chase. One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people do when they're new and scared in chase is camp pallets, as in they walk up to a pallet and sit there and wait at it for the killer to show up. Never, ever, ever camp pallets. Not only is this a big waste of the pallet, but you're also wasting your own time where you likely could have made it to the next pallet or a window nearby and used those items to extend the chase and use less resources. Please never, ever, ever get into a locker mid chase, even if you think you're safe. Obviously, the only exception to this is running a build like head on and quick and quiet where you are on the offense in the locker. But if you're just getting into a locker slowly mid chase while the killer doesn't see you, they're going to notice that your scratch marks aren't there. They're going to notice that you never even left the area and they're probably going to start checking lockers and then you're just going to go down. Now, when you are looping something, you want to make sure that you're hugging it as tight as possible. Leave no space between you and the wall that you're looping. Hugging a loop tight is something that you'll get better with over time and gain confidence but just work on it for now. When looping anywhere with windows, bear in mind that the window will block off after the third vault while in chase. If you vaulted that window twice and you're about to go through it for your third time, your next move should be to go somewhere else and try to leave the area. At any point when you're running the killer or the killer is on you, please make sure to stay away from hook survivors, even if they're in like a favorable looping area, like a main building. Like we said at the beginning, the whole point of being in chase with the killer is to waste the killer's time. And by being near a hook survivor, you're helping out the killer. Lead the killer somewhere else so that your teammates can get the unhook. On the topic of choosing where to guide a killer, if it's possible, take the killer to where generators are completed. A good killer likely won't fall for this because they know that they don't have an objective to defend over there. But if they do fall for it, you're buying massive time and safety for your team. Lastly, for the do's and don'ts, and this one might surprise you, but don't be afraid to just hold W sometimes. By hold W, I mean literally just hold forward and run in a straight line. Sometimes you just have literally nothing nearby, the pallets are gone, or it, the gen you're working on is in a dead zone. And it, it, sometimes it's better to just take the hit and just W key in a straight line and make the most distance you can. My last tip, tip number five, is kind of a generalization, but it's called make the most of it. If you just got done spending all this time with the killer and the killer drops you, your next thought should be if you can heal, if you can get an unhook or where the next gen is, you want to stay productive. You just wasted the killer's time. Don't waste yours. 
This is equally true for if you know your teammates are getting chased. Make sure that you're doing gens and making the most of their time. Once you're back on a gen, it's time to start the whole thing over. Make a game plan. Survey your surroundings. Make sure you look behind you. Remember my do's and don'ts in chase. And then make the most of it. All right, that is my five tips to help beginner Dead by Daylight players survive just a little bit longer in chase. Let me know if this video helped, and I'll see you in the next one.